I'm in Matthew 7 tonight. I want to bring a message to you tonight about the house that stands. If you're taking notes, the house that stands. Thank you, Cody. And thank you, worship team, so much. These are Jesus' words. He says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. And though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. And when the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Wow. These are the words of Jesus. You know, sand is small particles of rock. A piece here, a piece there. Are you with me tonight? Our firm foundation has to be on Christ alone. How we build our lives is of the utmost importance. I want to say that again. How we build our lives is of the utmost importance. Unfortunately, a lot of people waste a lot of time in their life trying to build and create an image for themselves rather than building what is actually most important. And that is a heart that fears God, a heart that trembles at the word of the Lord, a heart that is developed and a soul that is developed where we start really digging deep and fortifying our inner convictions, our ethics, our standards, our morals. Are you out there tonight? Are you listening? We have to develop that. And it's developed by honoring the living word who is Christ and honoring the written word. Amen? If you're taking any level of notes, I want you to write this down. The foundation is the most important part to any structure. The foundation is is the most important part of any structure. You can walk up to a skyscraper in New York, Chicago, Dallas, and you know when you walk up to that mighty skyscraper, no one walks up and goes, oh, my gosh, what a magnificent, thick, powerful foundation. That's because you're in awe and you're in wonder of the architecture. How many of you love architecture? I love it. I love it. I'm fascinated by it. I love being in cities and especially with, you know, cities like Chicago or New York or San Fran. And I just love all the architecture. It's it's fabulous. But no one walks up and says, oh, what a magnificent foundation. Well, you know my point. And it's because it's not even seen. It's not even visible to the natural eye. It's actually buried deep, deep, deep down in layers and layers and layers and layers. And why? Why? Because the structure has to be built in such a way That whatever comes, whatever winds come, whatever storms come, whatever earthquakes come, whatever hurricanes come, the foundation is going to anchor that structure in such a way that it's not going to see destruction. Are you with me tonight? The foundation is the most important. You must be anchored, ladies and gentlemen, in Christ alone. And if there's anything else that we're trying to actually anchor our lives in, I will tell you plainly, flat-footed, eyeball to eyeball tonight, it will be shaken away. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul writes about this. He says, 
For we are both God's workers. He's talking about the apostolic work there, and I won't dive into all of that, but I want you to just pick up in verse 9. And you are God's field, you are God's building. Make sure you underscore that in your scriptures tonight. You and I are God's building. Because of God's grace in me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. And now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we have already laid. That is what? Jesus Christ. Jesus is not only the head of the church. Jesus is the foundation of all. He, and remember this. He's the master builder. He's the master builder. Jesus said he is literally building a church that the gates of hell is not going to prevail against. I want to remind you that he's a master builder. He's a master. Jesus is building something magnificent. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, Paul writes about the gifts that are given to the church, the apostles, the prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. He says their responsibility is actually to equip God's people to do the work. And watch this. He says, and build up the church. Notice that. God's building something. He says, I'm going to use these gifts. I'm going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to, I'm going to disperse these gifts of apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers, evangelists. But God has something in mind. He's got a vision in mind. He says, I'm going to build my church. That's what I'm about. That's what I'm after. I'm going to build the body of Christ. And this will continue until we all come to such a unity of the faith and the knowledge of God's Son that we would become mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Now, we are truly in the last days, dear friends. I don't have to beat that drum very hard. We are in the last days in this hour. Our lives have to be built upon the unchanging word of the Lord. While madness and insanity is manifesting all around us in a generation that is running from the grip of God or the word of the Lord and the knowledge of God and the truth of God, we have to be those that are securely anchored, anchored in the Lord because everything that can be shaken, it will be shaken. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 7, he said, I will shake the nations, and they shall come to the desire of all the nations who is King Jesus. Amen. And I will fill the temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. I love how David writes in Psalm 16. He says, I know the Lord is always before me. I will not be shaken or I shall not be moved, for he is right by my side. The Apostle Paul, we're using Scripture tonight, amen? We don't apologize for using the Bible. The Apostle Paul writes it like this in Hebrews chapter 12. He says, see that you don't refuse him that speaks, for if they did, they did not escape or ref, uh, who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Are you with me? Is the text behind me? Stay with me tonight. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now has promised to say yet once more, I'll not only shake the earth, but I'll shake also the heavens. And now this yet once more indicates the removal of all those things that can be shaken. Let me read that again. It indicates the removal of all the things that can be shaken of the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Let me pause right here and just say, the shaking is purposeful so that it can reveal the foundations. The Listen, guys, grab hold of this. The shaking is purposeful so that it, re it reveals the very foundation. What God wants to show his ecclesia, what God wants to show his church in this last day, in the great and mighty shaking that's happening all over the nations of the world, right now he wants to show you, you have an unshakable kingdom within you. You have a gold on the inside of you. The kingdom of God is within you and it will stand supreme. 
While everything on the exterior is shaking, you will not be shaken. You will not be moved. Hallelujah. And therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace for which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Huh. He's a consuming fire. Without a doubt, friends, in 2023, God is shaking every structure. He is shaking every institution. He is shaking every government. He is shaking every leadership. He is shaking churches right now. He's shaking businesses right now. Are you seeing amazingly how easy it is for businesses and corporations to bow down to the spirit of this age? I mean, it's utterly amazing seeing these businesses. It's it's almost like they're standing in line to see who can lose as much money as possible fastest. Are you with me tonight? Uh, It's a weird game that they're in. They're in this weird competition. Oh, wait a second. Target lost $13 billion. We're just going to go after all the wokeness we can, and we're going to try to lose $15 billion. It's insanity. What's happening? The foundations are being revealed. And everything that can be shaken is being shaken. Everything that's being shaken right now is for this. It's going to test its worth. It's going to test its worth. It's going to test its real pillars. It's going to test its purity. It's going to test its character, whether it's gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, look at it. Go there with me tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Anyone who builds on that foundation must use a variety of metals, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on judgment day, fire, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. And the fire will show if a person's work has any value. That's strong. You know, you can't fool God. The fire's going to reveal. The fire's going to reveal its value. Verse 14, look at it with me. And if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved. But like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Oh, there's a radical shaking going on. This is an hour of urgency. We understand this. This tribe, this people understands this urgent hour. We understand we are in the hour of crisis. We understand, ladies and gentlemen, most of the church is in a state of crisis because so much of the church has been playing pitiful religious games. And God is shaking all of that fluff out as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is not exempt from the shaking. God is revealing what has been phony and fake all along. And he's going to show you what the real powerful church that Jesus Christ has been building for himself. He's building a church. He's building a church that the gates of hell is not going to prevail against. And you may hear me say that another thousand times before the king comes, but I'm going to keep beating that drum. Because we are that church that Jesus is building. You are not weak. You are not weak. You are powerful. You are anointed. Jesus is building you. But you've got to be careful in the building process as well. You've got to build as a wise master builder. And there's no other foundation. Whoo, man. Than Christ alone. Than Christ alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, write a song, Cody, weak made strong.
The shaking in the church is doing a number of things. It's separating the mixture of the spirit of the world out of the church. And let's welcome that and let's praise God for that. I mean that. Let's welcome that. Let's praise God for that. Yeah, thank you. It's time for the mixture, the inundation of the spirit of this age and the spirit of the world to get out of the church. I don't know how the church ever turned into a nightclub. I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand how we got here to fog machines and laser machines and dark sanctuaries. and I, I, I don't know how we ever got here, but we got here, and it's pitiful. That's right. We tried to be like the world. And let me tell you something. You'll never influence the world when you're trying to be like it. Come on. The other thing that the Lord is shaking out is the false teachers and the false prophets. Hello. Hello. We are in the last days. Jesus warned about a great deception. He said, you make sure you are anchored and you are not deceived. There are so many false teachers, so many false prophets. And God's going to shake it all. And he's going to expose it for what it is. You're going to see what is real, what is gold, what is true, what has been anchored in gold, silver, precious stones, and that which has to burn and it has to go. And I tell you what, folks, I welcome this day. I welcome this day. I'm like, yes, Lord. That's right. Let all the phony stuff go. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3, it says, By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. I, I want to I go back. I, I don't know if you can grab it, guys, back there, but I want to go back to the opening statement. Of Jesus' words in Matthew 7. Go there again. Matthew 7. I, I feel led to go back and read this again. If anyone listens to my teachings and follows it, they are wise. Like a person who builds a house in solid rock. And though the rain comes in torrents and in flood waters and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds their house on sand. And when the rains and the floods came and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Now, I'm talking to you tonight about the house that stands. We have a, we have a really bizarre thing that's going on in our nation. And the shaking is revealing a whole lot because once upon a time, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C., it used to be a house of honor and dignity. Are you with me tonight? It was a residence that was actually a very regal monument for all the citizens of the United States of America. The house was actually a, a beacon of hope. The house was a beacon of freedom. It was a beacon of liberty for all. But tragically, in our more recent history, the house has actually become a house of filth. The house on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue has become a house of utter abominations unto God. The White House is supposed to be far more than this than just a house of authority. The White House has been called to be a house of true honor. Can I get a witness tonight? Just weeks ago, and I didn't give a lot of attention to this, but weeks ago, the house and the lawn was filled with a lot of immoral debauchery. But then this past week, cocaine was found in the White House. Now, this is amazing. Cocaine. I, folks, we are in deep trouble. We, at, guys, as a nation, the lawlessness in this nation is at an epic high. 
Now, some may say, well, that's really not a big deal. And I'm, I'm not naive about the White House either. Because we know what's been going on there for decades. Are you with me? Guys, America has to experience an epic deliverance from evil. The house has to be cleansed. The house has to be torched with the fire of the Lord. The house has to go through a deep cleansing, purging of the presence of God. And it's only going to come by God's great grace and great mercy over this land to cleanse that house and make it a house of purity once again. Cocaine in the house. Cocaine in the house. I want to ask you a question. Did that stop you this week in your tracks? No, I mean it. I mean, it. Did, it, did it really stop you in your tracks? What did it do to you? I mean, it was, just, it was days before we started celebrating the 4th of July. I want to say this tonight. Um, I'm not naive about what has gone on for decades. I mean, we, we could go back to the radicalness of the day of JFK. We know what was happening in that White House. Are you with me? We could talk about all of the sex sexapades. We could talk about, uh, obviously, the Clintons. We've lived through that. We could go on to Obama, but now cocaine is found. The news reported that when the cocaine was found, that Biden was at Camp David. How many of you saw that? Yeah. So he wasn't at the White House, but obviously this was not the first time that illegal drugs was used or brought into the White House. Now, I'm going to share a few things here with you. <laughs> Back in 2013, there was a, a rapper named Snoop Dogg. I know you all have his albums. <laughs> yes, I see all those hands. We didn't do a Snoop Dogg track tonight, did we, Cody? I didn't think so. Snoop Dogg. I can't believe I'm saying Snoop Dogg. On Saturday night here. I don't even know a Snoop Dogg song, so praise God. But Snoop Dogg, uh, he, he boasted that he smoked marijuana in a bathroom in the White House. This was in 2013. Willie Nelson, famous country western star, he boasted that he smoked a joint on the roof of the White House during Jimmy Carter's presidency. <laughs> 1985, during Ronald Reagan's presidency, there was a basketball star. His name was Gary McLean. He was with the championship team. He boasted that he was wired on cocaine when he went to go visit Ronald Reagan in the White House. So again, guys, we understand there's been a lot of debauchery in that house. I think about Obama's trans filth obsession. And what happened under his watch for eight years, I remember that White House being lit up for the first time in the rainbow. Ladies and gentlemen, so much has fund fundamentally been transformed in this nation through those years. Did you hear what I just said? The story was told to us that the cocaine was found in the West Wing. I say that in quotes. Obviously, it's very likely who we know it, it belongs to. So I don't know if this message is going to go on YouTube or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say Hunter Biden. Just going to go ahead and use those words, Hunter Biden. When the imposter in chief, Joe Biden, was asked about cocaine being found, I'm talking to you about a house tonight, about a house that actually stands. So stay with me. I'm talking about a house that really stands tonight. When Joe Biden was asked about cocaine being found inside the White House, he sat there and he smirked and then he laughed. And I want to tell you, folks, this is no laughing matter. I'm going to say that again. This is no laughing matter. It's, it seems like, see, it, it seems like the hour is so dark 
And it's so bleak and it's so sick. People want to make some silly slight or joke about what is happening. This is not an hour for that. Now, I've said this many, many times. It, the sin that is going on in America, it, it, America, this generation is not even blushing when they sin. They're just adding on layers of jokes and more jokes and late night talk show jokes and more and more and more. It's no laughing matter, ladies and gentlemen. You know that. I know that. So the White House is supposed to be the, the most secure building in the United States. There's cameras everywhere. The security is amazing. There's snipers all over the roof. There's soldiers on guard. I've been there. I've been there many times. How did the Secret Service somehow get confused when the story first broke? For those of you that know what happened, how did the story first break that it was actually in the East Wing? And the East Wing is the private sector where only the family can go in. And then two hours later, the story was changed that, oh, no, it was actually in the West Wing. It's very convenient, isn't it? Very convenient. We're, we're supposed to believe that? I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Where, where are we in America? Where are we? And where are we going? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. It says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove your evil deeds from before my eyes, and cease to do evil. There has got to be an ecclesia. There has got to be a people who will cry out for mercy in this hour for this nation. I am believing with you, you're believing with me, that God's going to give us a president that's going to fear him. That God's going to give us a president that loves God's heart. And it's abundantly evident, it's abundantly clear that God has given us a president that trembles at the word of the Lord, that has a heart of a father. God is wanting to put a father In that house, hear this tonight. God is wanting to put a father in that house who knows God, who worships God, who fears God, who walks with God, who prays only to God. My faith is there. I'm calling into that house someone who truly knows the Lord and who will call the prodigal nation back home. Come on, church. The White House is not only supposed to be a house of authority, it's supposed to be a house of honor. We've all seen this. It's a house where medals of honor are given out to true heroes. Now, I'm not talking about the crazy, phony, fake, idiot uh, medals going out that we've seen over the years. I'm talking about when, when back when there was a time where we were handing out real medals of honor to people who were truly, truly heroes for this country that fought for this land. It was a house of honor. And now it's become a laughing stock to all the ends of the earth. It's absolutely sickening. The house is supposed to give honor to all the citizens of this nation. And the house is actually supposed to give honor to Almighty God, who is the Father of this nation. Let me tell you about a story out of the Gospels. Jesus went to visit a house in Jerusalem. He was going there because he knew it was supposed to be a house of honor. He knew it was supposed to be a house of worship. He knew it was supposed to be actually a house of prayer. But when he got there, it was much different. It was supposed to be a house of purity. It was actually supposed to be a house of holiness, a house of intercession and prayer, a place where people encountered God. But in Matthew chapter 21, it says this, when Jesus went into the temple of God, 
He drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. I want to say this tonight. Jesus was angry and Jesus was absolutely disgusted. Jesus was angry. Jesus was disgusted by what he saw. Jesus was overtaken by the zeal of God. David writes about this, Psalm 69 in verse 9. David prophetically wrote, he says, Because zeal for your house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of those who reproach, reproach have fallen upon me. Jesus was moved by the zeal of God. He was moved with holy zeal. He was disgusted. He was grieved by what he saw. Can we be grieved in this hour, or is it just going to continue to be a laughing matter? I've been in the White House several times. The, the last time I was there, uh, it was a winter. It was the winter of 2020, and I was there with Dutch Sheets. And with a few other choice ministers, <clears throat> I remember when Dutch reached out to us, um, my wife and I, about this assignment. And we had just come through Christmas. And the next day, Dutch reached out to us and said, this is what we're doing. Will you come? Just days before the new year. And I remember our prayer time there. It was intense. And we're talking, you know, we're talking January 21st. You fast forward three weeks and Joe Biden was, and Kamala Harris was going into the White House. It, it was intense. And we were warring over the destiny of our nation and what had happened just through this horrific election and really what had been stolen from our country. The White House is not the Lord's house, but I say to you, it can be. It can be. And the way that it can is, is if those in leadership can honor God and worship God in that place. But you see my point tonight. Matthew chapter 12, I want you to look at this. Matthew 12. Jesus teaches us something about a house. He says, when an unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. But it finds none. And then it says, what, what is it? The spirit. The spirit actually says to itself, it says, I will return to the house from which I've come. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept clean, and put in order. But it goes and it brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. There's so much to be harvested from this. Jesus is teaching us something. The house has to be cleansed. The house has to be purified. The house has to be put in order. But the biggest thing is, is the house has to be filled with the presence of the Lord. The house has to be filled with the glory of the Lord. It has to be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit himself. And it seems like all hell is invading and occupying right now. It's not the end of the story. Psalm chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, The ungodly are like chaff which the wind drives away. What does that mean? It means that they're here today and they're gone tomorrow. I'm going to say it again. It's, they're here today, they're gone tomorrow. Folks, mark it down. Things are going to change. I said things are going to change. Things are going to change. The shaking is going to deal with the chaff. And the chaff and the garbage is going to be finally taken out of the house. Yeah. 
And the ecclesia is standing faithful, faithful in its place, agreeing with God in the earth realm, and continues to say, Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The ecclesia continues to decree, we're not giving America over to the minions and the devils and the wolves. America belongs to the Lord. He said the house has to be swept clean, but it has to be filled with the glory. It has to be filled. I believe that this is happening right now, and I want to just give you a picture of it tonight. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, you may know it very well, but perhaps you don't. But I want you to see this. It's a picture of Jesus standing at the door. And he's knocking, and he says, if you'll hear my voice, and if you'll open the door, I'll come in, and I'll dine with you. We'll have intimate fellowship together. You'll be with me. I'll be with you. My friends, listen, I believe that the Lord is knocking on the door of America right now. And he's saying, let me in. Will you open the door? Let me in. Let me come into the house. Let me clean your house. Let me clean your house. Let me purify your house. Let me drive out your devils. Let me drive out your devils. Let me cleanse your atmosphere from the filth. Let me cleanse your atmosphere from debauchery. Let me cleanse your atmosphere from all of this sexual perversion and insanity. You know, God is able and God is willing. I said God is able and God is willing. He desires to be let in. I was ministering at a church many years ago. This church had a prayer center connected to it on its property. And I remember walking from the church to the prayer center, and I I looked out to the sign of the church, and I saw the Lord sitting underneath the sign as a lion, a mighty lion. And he said, this is where they want me. This is where they want me. They want me here so that I can point people into their place for their services. But they don't want me in their services. He said some other things. I'm not going to say those tonight. The Lord has to be let in. He's the only one that can truly clean the house. He's the only one who could fill the house and transform the atmosphere of this nation. Because, guys, we're in, we're in deep trouble. We're in deep trouble. I don't know what it did for you about the story breaking concerning cocaine in the White House, but I'll tell you what, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I'm hurt. I'm offended. I'm angry. This is not who America really is. This is not what our nation is supposed to be. If our founding fathers could walk onto the landscape right now, they would tell us, we already told you what to do. We already already told you long ago what you're supposed to do. When you see this manifest, you have an obligation to deal with it. They already set the protocol. They said, this is what you do. You clean the house. Jesus gave us a warning. This is where I want to land tonight. He gave us a warning in Matthew chapter 24. He said, because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. And one of my friends reached out to me this week, and he said, man, I, I really struggle with this. I wrote him back, and I said, me too. Me too. 
Because it's like you can see so much insanity. You can see so much debauchery. You can see so much lawlessness, so much anarchy, and so much madness that you can start growing cold. We have to beware of this. It is a warning from Jesus. He told us about these last days. He said, you got to beware of this because it's, it's going to be dark and your heart could grow cold. And I've told you this before. I pray to God that's never your story. And that's never my story. I could feel it coming on, though, and that's when I go to God in prayer. And I say, God, I don't want my heart to grow cold towards our generation. When I was growing up in the church, the altars, the altars were a place where we encountered God. Now, I love what we do. Don't get me wrong. I love what we do. I love how we minister to people. But the altar was a place where we, we found our sacred space to encounter God and minister unto the Lord. But our pastor would say, come and let the Lord do heart surgery upon you. He would. Come and let the Lord do heart surgery on you. Come and let the Lord encounter you and speak to you. And I'm drawing, pointing to this tonight because it's so important. Our hearts are grieving. You can feel it in the church. You can see it on people. You can feel it in worship services. You can feel how weary people are. You can feel it. People are weary. People are angry. People are broken. We need to be broken for our country in this hour and connect with God and say, God, we need the fire. We need the fire of the Lord to come and cleanse and purge this nation. We need the fire of the Lord to turn this nation right side up again. Are you with me? Listen to these words one more time. If anyone listens to my teaching and follows him, he's wise. He's like a person who builds a house on solid rock. And though the rains come and the torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. What did Jesus tell Peter? What, what, what did he tell him? He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father in heaven has revealed this. And I tell you, Peter, he said, on this rock, what is that rock? It's the rock of the revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He said, I will build my church upon this rock of revelation that you have received. I am the Son of the living God. And it's upon that revelation I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. But if you don't, if you hear my teachings and you don't obey it, then you're foolish. You're like a person who builds your house on the sand. And the rains and the floods come. And the winds beat against the house. And its collapse will be with a mighty crash. I want to go back to the front of this train. The most important thing of any structure is the foundation. It's going back to the basics. It's not stuff that makes people run around the sanctuary and go wild. It's going back to the basics, and it's it's actually examining the foundations and how we are building in our inner life right now, and that we're fortifying with the Holy Spirit, that we're walking congruently with the Spirit of God. Because, ladies and gentlemen, everything that can be shaken is being shaken. But I want to tell you, What Jesus is building will endure. What Jesus is building will be unshakable. What Jesus is building will be immovable. And what Jesus is building will be incorruptible. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to put your hands out tonight to receive from the Lord. Jesus, build your church. Jesus, build your church. Use your gifts. Use your apostles and prophets. 
and pastors and teachers and evangelists, Lord, until we come into the full stature of Christ so that we're not tossed like a wave. But, Lord, we grow up into maturity, into fullness, God. Lord, I pray tonight that you would fortify our pillars, our foundations, Lord, deep, deep, deep. That whatever comes, Lord, in the coming weeks and months and years ahead, that, Lord, we will not be shaken. We will not be moved. We will be anchored. We will be secure. Holy Spirit, I thank you. You just take this word tonight. Minister to your bride. Minister to your church. I speak the strength of God into every one of you this night in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Ushers, would you come tonight? I want to serve you. If you need an offering envelope this evening, lift your hand high. Thank you, ushers. You can open your apps. Our Victory FLA app, you can open our website. You can give safely and securely tonight. Thank you, ushers. Yeah, lift your hand high. You need an offering envelope? There you go. There you go. There you go. Excellent. Thank you. Brent, I want you to come. So, as my wife is coming in just a moment... um, This is a big week. This is a historic week for the Gibbs family. Um, Our son is getting married next weekend. (laughs) We're so proud of you, Josiah. So proud of you. Um, So proud of Cecily. Um, We're just ecstatic. Next weekend, there will be a a beautiful private wedding for Josiah and Cecily, and um, we couldn't open it up for everybody, for her church, our church. It would just, it would be a little insane, Um, but we are having a beautiful private service um, uh, ceremony next weekend, and then when they return from their honeymoon... (laughs) We are throwing a, they are throwing a huge bash, a huge party that we want to invite every one of you to, to celebrate them, to enjoy them, Um, and it's going to be beautiful. So this is a big week for us, and this coming weekend, we have a special, a special voice that's going to be in the pulpit next week. Shane's going to be in the pulpit next weekend for us. (laughs) Thank you, Shane. Shane is such a wonderful messenger of the Lord, and I I know he's going to carry something strong to the house. It's going to build the house. Amen. So it's going to be excellent. So we have a few announcements tonight, then we're going to receive our offering. All right. A couple of announcements. The Married Couples House Fire is this next Friday, July 14th at... 6.30 6.30 p.m. If you are not a regular attender of that, there are a few openings. They do try to keep it small, so there are a few openings. And if, so if you are not a regular attender and you want to be a part of that, um, go to the app or the website and you can register uh, online there. Also, um, for our Tuesday night services, we did not have Tuesday night last week, which is usually the first of the month, or it is the first of the month, and on the first of the month, we usually have a children's um, classes available, but since we didn't have it, we are going to switch it from the first and third to the second and fourth um, for our kids um, for two reasons. One is just since we weren't, we didn't have it last week, but then also on the fourth, which is the 25th, Tuesday the 25th, that is the week of our fast, so we wanted to make that available for the families for that week. So the week of the fast is July 23rd through the 29th. Um, Vision Night is coming up July 21st at 7 p.m. You can register on the app or the website as well. Please let us know if you need child care for that. And Vision Night is just um, just what it What it says, it's just to get to know the vision of the church. Um, Brian and I will be sharing that night of our history 
where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going. So we welcome you to be a part of that. We also have a back-to-school party and a parents' day out going on Sunday, August 13th. It's from 3 to 7 p.m., and you can register your kids for the back-to-school party which will um, be a wonderful time for them just to get together and celebrate this new school year and have some fun together. And also the parents have the opportunity to all go out as parents and as adults without the kids. So um, you can also register for that as well and be a part of that. Um, So they're all going to go out together. Um, You can just do your own thing, but for those of you who would like to get together kind of as a family house fire without the kids, (laughs) they're they're somewhere else, you can do that. So please register and sign up for either of those. Um, That would be great. We're excited about that. So I think that's about it. Um, So Brian, you can come back up and I'm all done. Mm -hmm. I am normally not this transparent with the church, but I, I have to say something tonight. I have, uh, I have been so dizzy. I have felt like I was going to fall over about five or six times tonight, and it's not the anointing. I'm really, really dizzy. I tried to preach the best I could tonight, but I literally just went from the piano again to try to get to this pulpit, and I didn't want to end up on the floor like Sue. Uh, <laughs> and, but I've, I've really been struggling. I feel like I need to eat something. Um, I, I need to hydrate and I need to eat something. So I, I, just to let you know, I've been trying to do my best and preach tonight. But literally, I have been so dizzy for about the last 40 minutes. And uh, sometimes when I was walking, like it felt, I felt like I was on a ship. Um, so I'm going to slip out and I'm going to be just fine. I'm going to get something to eat and, uh, and hydrate really well. So uh, don't worry about me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be okay. I just needed to let you know, um, because I've been feeling so strange tonight. So, let's pray. Let's pray. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we bless this offering in the name of the Lord Jesus. May we glorify you in our giving and in our gifts tonight. Thank you. That feels really good. Lord, we just bless our seed and the tithe of this house. And Lord, may you multiply it to bring forth miracles, miracles in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just declare you are the Lord, our healer. (laughs) And I thank you that even now I am receiving, Lord. Thank you, God. You are so good. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, go ahead. Serve the people tonight. Um, I don't like to become the center of attention like this. I just had to let you know I I was really struggling tonight. And um, I'm going to get into my office and get something to eat. Amen. And hydrate tonight. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Phyllis. Yeah. So I want, our, I want our awesome prayer team to go ahead and ready themselves, to prepare themselves to minister to those that need prayer tonight. And. on the keys. I was looking at you. I was like, oh, I, I, I recognize her. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> oh, man. I feel so weird. Uh, I, again, I'm, I'm not this transparent um, just with the, with the way that I have felt, but it's been very notable. So, uh, <laughs> Lord is good. Lord is with us. Amen. He's with us. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll take some trail mix. Thank you, son. Thanks, buddy. Amen. Can our prayer team come? We want to serve the people tonight. Amen. If you need prayer for any reason at all, and I'll get some prayer in my office tonight. <laughs> but if you have any need whatsoever, we want to pray with you, agree with you tonight. And Father, we pray that in this altar, the touch of God, the touch of heaven will be released upon every life. Healing release, miracles relief, released in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Father, I just want to bless your church. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that this week will be so powerful. This week will be so powerful for you. There will be breakthroughs everywhere. There will be mighty open doors before you and your family. The goodness of God will rain down upon you. That God will use you to impact lives. God will use you to give words in due season, in due time. Words. The Lord will use your hands to lay hands upon the sick and they will recover. The Lord will use you in power and victory this week. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Let's stand. Amen. The altars are open tonight.